Um, you will have a – I'll give you part of your assignment today, but the other, the rest of your assignment will be tomorrow. So whether or not you get, want to get started on this tonight is up to you. But you might want to try a couple problems so you kind of feel good about going. So we're going to start with something called a rate of change uh, in the natural and social sciences. This is uh, really important. We're going to build off this for times to come. So this piece you're going to see again multiple times. Given a function s is equal to f of t, where s is in distance and t is in time, define the following. s equals f of t is a position function, where the velocity is a rate of change. The velocity function is simply the derivative of the position function. Velocity is the derivative of the position function. What does that mean? That means when I'm on my way home, I call my wife, she says, what mile marker are you at? I say, I'm at mile marker 23. Is that my position or my velocity? Position. When she says, how fast are you going to say 70 miles per hour? That's my velocity. See the difference? So where I'm at and, and velocity is my rate or my speed. Yep. So velocity is different because a velocity has direction. So positive velocity, negative velocity. To the right, positive velocity. To the left, negative velocity. When is the particle at rest? You tell me when is this object at rest? Right when it hits the top, right? So think about this. If I go from positive velocity to negative velocity, positive to negative, what must I cross over when I go positive to negative? Zero. So that means that the particle is at rest when it has a velocity of zero. Now that we're, yeah, exactly. So this is hard because this is technically a three-dimensional space. So it's if I could just throw it straight up, well, I can't do that. <laughs> so technically there is still motion because I can't do it perfectly. But the idea is that when the velocity of the object is equal to zero, the particle is at rest. The particle is moving to the right or up when v of t is greater than zero. When the velocity is positive, it's moving in the positive direction. And when the velocity is negative, it's moving in the negative direction. So we just want to work through example one today, and uh, hopefully we can do that and uh, uh, figure this out. It says we have a position function that's equal to um, uh, t to the third minus 12t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the position function, but I'm also going to graph the uh, velocity function. So we can see what both, they, what both look like. Remember on the last test, I would ask you to look at the original function and then sketch its derivative. We're doing that same thing right now, okay? So we're going to, these two will have a relationship. They won't look the same, but they will be similar. So this is a cubic. I'm going to uh, graph it by simply factoring it. I'm going to go t times t squared minus 12. And that will allow me to find the point to where it crosses the x-axis. So can anybody identify where this is going to cross the x-axis? Zero and... Uh, t squared minus 12, so it will be the square root of 12, right? Plus or minus the root of 12. So negative root of 12 is about negative 3.5, and positive root of 12 is about positive 3.5. So this will give me enough to get a general sketch for this graph. Now, the derivative of the position function is the velocity function. If I take a derivative of a cubic, I get a quadratic. Think about this from what we just did in the, in the previous unit. Right here is the derivative positive or negative? Positive. So therefore the graph will be, what does that mean? Above the x-axis. Derivative is equal to, so it will cross over zero at that spot. Derivative is negative, so it will be below the x-axis. Derivative is zero here, so it will cross over zero. And the derivative is positive, so it will be above. Agreed? You could get a general idea. It's going to look just like a parabola. Let's get a better sketch by actually finding the velocity at time t. Velocity at time t is equal to how do we find velocity? We don't do that anymore, folks. We are done with the formal definition of the derivative. X plus h, you'll never have to do it again. I promise. 
So what we're going to do instead is we are going to just take the derivative. What's the derivative of uh, t to the third minus 12t? That was easy, huh? That's a parabola. Does it go up or down? Up. Let's find out where it crosses the x-axis. Where is it going to cross? 2 and negative 2. Yep. You see how these graphs are related. The derivative is equal to 0 at negative 2. And this crosses the x-axis at negative 2. You guys told me the derivative is positive or negative right here. So therefore, the derivative is above the x-axis. See how one is the derivative of the other? OK. So let's answer some other questions. What is the velocity after 3 seconds? If I want to find the velocity, do I plug 3 into the position function or the velocity function? Yeah, so velocity at time 3 is equal to 3 times 3 squared minus 12 or 27 minus 12, which is 15. Now, every time we find a derivative, if we can provide a label, we should. What is the label here? Feet per second. So it's traveling at a, spe at a speed of 15 feet per second. When is the particle at rest? That's when the velocity is equal to? Zero. So when is v of t equal to 0? And v of t is 3t squared minus 12. We already solved that, didn't we? When we made the graph, we found out where it crossed the x-axis. So 0 is equal to 3 times t minus 2 times t plus 2. Now this is important. Look at the original problem. It says... A particle moves according to a law of motion. S is equal to f of t for time greater than or equal to 0. Does it make sense that your time would be need to be greater than or equal to 0? So I've graphed it for both negative time and positive time. But we just want the positive portion. So right here I've solved and it says that t is equal to negative 2 and positive 2. But to answer the question, when is the particle at rest? Only at the positive value, correct? So therefore, at 2 seconds. So at 2 seconds is when the particle is at rest. We don't count the negative one. That's not part of our domain. When is the particle moving in the positive direction? The particle is moving in the positive direction when the, when the derivative is greater than 0. Is this my position function or my derivative? So the derivative is positive where? Give me a description. Okay, when it's above the x-axis, right? So it's going to be positive here and here and here, but negative in those spots. So yes, you're exactly right. We're not going to count the negative portion. We're simply going to count the positive. So it's moving in the positive direction from uh, 2 to infinity. The problem stated that we're looking at time greater than or equal to zero. I can't think of a situation where they will allow for negative time, but maybe I haven't seen one yet. In all the AP Calc problems I've had, we always just refer to positive time. Make sure you're talking in time, though. If it was degrees, could you have negative degrees? Yeah, you could. So in time, that's, that's what we're looking at. Find the total distance traveled during the first eight seconds. OK. I know I say everything's important in calculus. This is important. Let's say it's 20 feet between me and the door, okay? There's a difference between distance traveled and displacement. Displacement and distance, okay? So I'm going to walk and ask you some questions. What is my total distance traveled? 40 feet. What is my displacement? Zero. I'm right back where I started, correct? 
So you can't simply check the beginning and the end because you might be in the same spot. That would be simply displacement, correct? So you need to check where you started. You need to check where you ended, but you also need to check where you changed direction, right? So in order to find distance, we need to check three things. Number one, our beginning, our end, and our change in direction. At what time do we begin? Zero. Now, if I want to find out where I am located, my position, do I plug my time into S of T or into V of T? S of T. This tells me my position. So at time zero, I have position S of zero. When you plug zero into your position function, what do you get? You get zero. So I start at zero. This is where I start. So I'm starting at zero. Right after I start, am I traveling in the positive direction right away or in the negative direction right away? Why am I traveling in the negative direction right away? Because the derivative, as you can see, is less than zero. So I'm going in the negative direction. And finally, at time two, I turn around and start heading in the positive direction. You see that? Uh, that's important. This tells me I'm below the x-axis, so I'm going in the negative direction. So this particle is going to move back this way. And we can find that out by simply plugging in something. What is the time at which I change direction? Two. So let's figure out where I am at time two. I plug that into my position function. 2 to the third minus 12 times 2. Because we already actually answered the question is when is the particle at rest? And we got 2 seconds. So that's the time at which I'm at rest or otherwise when I change direction. As you can see, I changed from negative, so I was going the negative direction, to the positive direction. And that changed at time 2. You see that? All right, so at time two, what do you get when you plug in two? Two to the third is negative six. Okay, so I get eight minus 24 is negative 16. Thank you. So I have negative 16. So you can see that we're correct. At, at time two, you're back here at negative 16. So therefore, you are going in the negative direction. Exactly what we thought with our, uh, with our graph of the derivative told us we'd be going in the negative direction. Okay, and then I need to check the end. Uh, when, do, when do I stop traveling? When's the last time I want to check? S of 8. So now i got to plug in 8 to the, uh, the function. And 8 to the third minus 12 times 8. So we got a value there for me. get 416 that's what they came up with second hour 416 so looks like the particle moves back to negative 16 is traveling in a negative direction and so this is at time equals 0 this is at time equals 2 and this is at time equals 8 so at time 0 it's at position 0 it moves back to negative 16 at time 2 and then it turns around and heads in the positive direction until time 8 which is at 416 units so that's the motion of the particle. But it did not answer the question, which is find the total distance. Close. I think that this is the easiest way to continue to think about it. How many units did I travel between here and here? 16. How many units did I travel then from here back to zero? Another 16, and then from 0 to here, 4 16. So this is how I always write it out. Traveled 16 back, 16 forward, and then 4 16 after that. So that would be a total of 
448 feet. And this is a good example of my drawing. These are some of the most common questions that you would be asked. Question? S of, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, that was bad placement there. I didn't even write it down. S of 8 was 416. That means that the total distance traveled was 448 feet. What's the displacement of the object? 416. It's 416 feet from where it started, but it's traveled a total of 448 feet. See the difference? Displacement and distance are different. So if you want to get started, uh, we're going to continue on this because we've got more notes on it. But uh, uh, page uh, 166, numbers 1 through 5, are going to be very similar to what we just did. Uh, you will have questions like this on your test. You will also have questions like this coming up in later tests and on your AP exam. It would be great to get a start uh, kind of early on that and see if you can uh, work out some of the kinks. Uh, we'll have other questions tomorrow. Um, I think that uh, problem number five, we're going to cover an example like number five tomorrow. It's a rational function. It's not a polynomial. So... But the questions that you're asked, I think, are, are identical. So, All right, uh, be ready to go tomorrow. we got a full day tomorrow, folks.